Hey, what's going on, you beautiful people? Welcome to the fan club. In this video, we are going to be breaking down Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie from 1995. Yesterday, we just wrapped up season two of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and I thought it would be pretty cool instead of getting right into season three. Let's take a little bit of a detour and talk about the movie. One of the biggest movies in the 90s. I know some people argue about if this was a success or not. I think it was pretty successful, especially once the VHSs came out. If you were a kid in the 90s, there was like a 30 to 40, maybe 50% chance that you had this VHS growing up. I knew so many kids that loved this movie, so I thought we would break it down recap it and then give you our opinion let's get into it hit that intro rangers you are watching the fan club you're watching the fan club and you're watching the fan club do you know what time it is and you know what time it is it's time for the fan club let's go hey i can't do this on my own because you know things ain't always sweet when you out here in these streets but my morpher when it morph i made a fake what is going on everybody welcome to the fan club it is your boy bras dan brosnan in the building we have a very fun episode we are going to continue our walk down power rangers memory lane but instead of breaking down an episode of power rangers today we are going to be breaking down the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie that dropped in 1995. We are going to give you a recap, our thoughts, and then we're going to get into some Ranger Wiki notes. Shout out Ranger Wiki. They are like the encyclopedia for Power Rangers. Whenever you need some extra information on something, go over there. They are freaking awesome. Well, let's get into today's video. In 1995, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie takes the beloved TV series on a wild, action-packed ride. The story begins with Angel Grove in a festive mood, preparing for the arrival of Ryan's Comet. But this joy is quickly overshadowed by the return of Ivan Ooze, a powerful villain freed from his ancient prison by Rita Repulsa and Lord Zed. The Rangers, summoned by their mentor Zordon, face off against Ooze's minions, but their powers vanish after he destroys the command center. Zordon, fatally wounded by Ooze's attack, urges them to seek the great power on Phaedos, a planet shrouded in mystery. Guided by Dosia, a powerful warrior, the rangers embark on a perilous journey facing a living dinosaur skeleton and the gatekeepers of the temple. Through their trials, they gain new Ninjetti powers, morphing into powerful warriors once again. Meanwhile, back in Angel Grove, Ivan Ooze, disguised as a wizard, unleashes a hypnotic ooze, turning adults into slaves, forcing them to dig up the Ectomorphicon Titans, weapons of immense power. Fred, a young friend of the Rangers, uncovers Ivan's sinister plot and rallies the other children to help. While the rangers face off against the titans and their monstrous leader ivan ooze who has fused with one of them the epic battle culminates in a thrilling showdown in space where the rangers utilize their newfound abilities and megazords to defeat ivan and save the world the film ends with the triumphant celebration in angel grove but not before a mid credit scene reveals that zed and rita are back ready for more mayhem Leaving the fate of the Power Rangers hanging in the balance, the 1995 Mighty Morphin Power Ranger movie is a vibrant and nostalgic journey into the world of the beloved heroes filled with action, adventure, and a heartwarming message of hope and friendship. This was the movie of my childhood, and I am not making this up. I don't think I was like old enough. I think I was like four when this came out. So I guess I was old enough to go to the theaters, but I don't remember going to it. I don't think my parents took me. I did have like all the McDonald's toys as a kid. I did have the VHS and that was what hooked me. I think I watched this thing four to five times a day when I was four years old. This was the movie of my childhood. Like I said before, I watched it probably at least a hundred times as a little kid. I can like cite line from line for most of the scenes in this movie. It was great. The suits were so freaking epic. 
I loved the action and the storyline of it. I don't think any Power Ranger movie has got close to this one for how good this one was. I loved the action in it, all right? So you start off, they're jumping out of planes, they're rollerblading. Five, ten minutes later, they're battling Ivan Ooze's creations. Then the command center is completely destroyed. They have to go to another planet. They get into more fights. There's Zord fights. There was so much going on, and I loved it. This was like a really cool action movie for the 90s and of course it was like a kids action movie so there wasn't anything too dark but it was still a lot darker than the tv show in the sense of Ivan Ooze was bad man like especially he was like trying to kill the parents at the end like I'm gonna use you as slaves and then when I'm done with you I'm gonna tell you to leap to your doom like, that was kind of dark Man, I watched this yesterday to kind of get all of my memories back because I remember this movie. I could do this review without watching it, but I wanted to just watch it again because have it fresh in my mind and have those feelings of being a young kid watching this movie and just loving every second of it. And this movie still holds up. It is a lot of fun. There's some really good one-line jokes in here like... Power Rangers, let me get my autograph book. There's a lot of Ivan Ooze awesome one-liners. I love this movie. I still give it like a 7, 8 out of 10. Like, it's not the best movie I've ever seen, but it holds up pretty good minus the Zord battles. The Zord battles look freaking awful, except for the part where the Falcon Zord has to like, become part of the train track to save the kids on the train that was cool i like that part and that still looks legit but the action scenes where they're battling ivan ooze and the megazord oh my god they're cringe worthy but that is okay it was 1995 but let's get into some notes from ranger wiki due to having a larger budget the visual effects and graphics in the movie are higher quality than the tv show yes they are those suits were so freaking flame the temple of the great power set was the largest set constructed for the movie the set, which included a functional waterfall, pool, and the huge door that reveals the Great Power Pyramid, took up an entire soundstage at the Warner Roadshow Movie World Studios on the Gold Coast of Queensland, Australia. That looked like it took up a whole soundstage. That was awesome. I like when they unlocked the powers and that giant pyramid thing comes like rolling out. It was super cool. The set for the ancient ruins of the Ninjetti Temple, also referred to as Dulcia's Palace, was built eight feet off the ground and was so large that it took up the combined space of both the command center set and the stage of Lord Zed's Palace. Wow. Several of the sets, including Lord Zed's throne room and Dosia's palace, were made up of aluminum foil over constructed wooden frames. Holy crap, I did not know that Hollywood magic is insane. According to Paul Freeman, who played Ivan Ooze, the movie was originally going to be done in the style of the TV shows before the producers changed their minds and decided to put more resources into the production. Yeah, from what I heard, they wanted to make this look more big box office since it was going to be a big Fox movie. Another fun fact, in order for the purple tongue to match the purple body, Freeman drank black currant juice held it in his mouth, and spit it out before each take. That is crazy. The ranger suits are made of PVC and metal plating rather than the standard spandex, and some rangers have features in their helmets that never appeared, like the mountable scope on Rocky's helmet and the headlights built into Aisha's helmet. The helmets also appear heavier and bulkier. About a year ago, my homie Dan and I from Legacy of Nerd, we got to interview the creator of the suits for this movie, and the materials were a lot heavier, even though they looked amazing. In my opinion, these are the best Mighty Morphin suits. 
However, we found out in the interview that a lot of the Rangers did not love these suits because they were super hot and you could overheat very fast. Another fun fact, as you guys know, Power Rangers is known for using Super Sentai footage in Japan, but this movie was the first Power Rangers feature to use completely new and original material. I love it. Also, the TV show characters Mr. Kaplan, Ernie, and Miss Appleby did not appear in the movie, nor are they alluded to at any point. However, Angel Grove High School is mentioned during the skydiving event and a sign saying Ernie's is visible during the opening shot of the child party scene. The command center and Zed's palace sets are much more detailed. The command center has lights built into the walls that dim and brighten as well as a rotating light in the door. There were so many cool fun things with this command center. If you go back and look, it was like an upgraded command center and I loved it as a kid. I was like, holy crap, this looks way cooler than the old one. Also, Rita, Lord Zed, Goldar, Zordon, and Alpha 5 all look quite different than on the show. You guys probably noticed that if you watch the movie, they all have their own look that's just a tad different than the other one. Still looks like Zordon and Alpha and the other characters, so you can recognize them, but they all had their own different designs and looks going on. The movie had come to DVD on a dual-sided double feature DVD with Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, and in 03, individually by 20th Century Fox Entertainment. It also aired on TV a few times, fully restored with sharper picture and clearer sound on Fox Kids and ABC Family. Oh man, I remember the days of watching that when it debuted on Fox Kids. Due to the longer than anticipated production, the episode Party Crasher was never made and was replaced in its scheduling spot by Storybook Rangers. I actually didn't know that. I love looking at the notes. You learn so much new stuff. There's so many more notes in this, but we are going to get to like four or five more and then probably end it. But this is a fun one. Catherine Sutherland originally auditioned for the part of Dosia, but was turned down because the producers felt that she was too young for the part. However, she would later be cast on the TV series third season as Catherine and would take over as the Pink Ranger. I actually did know this and I'm glad that she wasn't casted as Dosia. One, because yeah, she was too young for sure. Dosia needed to be a little bit older in my mind because she was like a wise warrior. And two, if they casted Catherine, then we would never have that character and she would have never replaced Kimberly. And I love Kat. She's like my favorite pink ranger. The theme music for Go Go Power Rangers, although having the same lyrics and musical notes, was played using electrical and heavy metal instruments with rock star like singing whereas the theme song is more orchestral. For this version, the song was performed by the Power Rangers Orchestra, a collaboration that featured credits of Mr. Big frontman Eric Martin, guitarist Tim Pierce, former Pablo Cruz bass player John Pierce, singer-pianist Kim Bullard, and former Guns N' Roses drummer Matt Sorum. Man, that is pretty freaking cool. I am not going to lie. When the movie was shown in the UK, it was before the three-part episode The Wedding had aired and therefore spoiled Rita's return. That's actually pretty funny. I hate when that happens in certain shows where the movie or a commercial or ad like spoils everything you've been watching. Originally, it was intended that the Rangers would return from Phaedos to the command center to find Zordon dead. They would then restore Zordon and the command center before going off to save Angel Grove from Ivan. This running order was swapped in post-production as the Rangers had to put Angel Grove first, although a picture of the helmetless Rangers preparing to teleport out of the restored command center was shown on the back of the VHS box and in the liner notes of the film's original soundtrack, while the actual scene is shown in the behind the scenes special, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie Secrets Revealed, and the sneak peek of the movie on the VHS release of The Page Master. The scenes in the restored command center were simply filmed before the destruction sequences. 
Wow, I remember that. Who remembers watching the Page Master and seeing that giant trailer behind the scenes type thing? It was so cool. Wow, that just like unlocked a memory in my head. I love this. I know this is going to be a longer video, but I hope we took you guys down memory lane. This was a lot of fun. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Shout out all of the fans out there that take the time out of their day to watch this content. You are the real MVPs and the reason why we can continue to make videos like this. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace. I want to take a second to shout out all of the Gold Ranger members, the Arctic Operator, Roderick Ham, Papillon Purple, Salima Ramirez, Stephen Heffelman, Chaos Draco, Thomas Franco, Anime King Nick, Lewis Cairns, Sean Schiffer, and Torrent Dark Gray. Thank you guys so much for your support, and if you want a video shout out like this one, sign up to be a Gold Ranger member today. Hey, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, hit that share button, and if you can, please sign up to be a member today. We have three membership power-ups. We have the Gold Ranger power-up, the most popular. You get into our exclusive fan club chat group. We have fan exclusive videos that we are adding monthly now and you get a video shout out. Yes, folks, at the end of our videos, I will shout out your name. We also have the Quantum Ranger power up where you get monthly meetings online with me. Yes, folks, we will talk once a month on Zoom and you can give me your ideas for future episodes. And then we have a professional package, the Dr. K power up that is for businesses that want to tap into the platform. If you guys can, please sign up to be a member today. It is highly appreciated and it helps us keep these videos going. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Peace. Hi. Hi. We're Bulk and Skull. We, we have are been requested, requested by, by the, the Fire Club, Club to say something, something funny. funny.